Well, it's one of the most challenging careers in the Royal Navy, piloting a helicopter. It takes six months of demanding training to get the coveted wings. Instruction takes place at RNAS Caldrose, the largest helicopter base in Western Europe. Now, once their basic training's over, a pilot can then move on to seeking aircraft or Lynx helicopters. Only after considerable experience can they join the elite search and rescue squadron. Last year, these machines were involved in 215 missions, saving 124 lives. Well, Paul Moss has followed a pilot on his basic training. This is his report. Helicopter pilots in the Navy perform an extraordinary variety of tasks, from frontline duties in wartime to rescuing people at sea. But they all have one thing in common. They all started here at RNAS Caldrose in Cornwall, where they received their basic training. Starting off, the radio frequencies will depart here on the ground frequency channel 2, calling up tower on channel 1. Dave McCowan's been in the Navy for three years, and so far he's had 40 hours of helicopter training. That puts him about halfway through his course. Dave's instructor today is Lieutenant Commander Chris McBean. He's spent more than a decade as a Navy pilot, specializing in anti-submarine warfare. Now he's passing on his skills to a new batch of intakes. The helicopter used for basic training is the Gazelle, manufactured by Westland in Yeovil. It'll already have been checked this morning by a team of engineers, but every pilot's responsible for carrying out a final examination of his aircraft. Fuel pump is on, sass in. Stick fuel on, all switched to off. Doors closed and latched. Harness is locked and tight. Harness locked and tight. The Gazelle appears to be fine. All that's left is to get permission from the control tower to start the engines. I go 50% at about 5-2. Clear to the left. In a busy airbase like Caldrose, helicopters have to taxi to their takeoff point, just like other aircraft. Compass pedals all good. Ready to go. Once there, the helicopter doesn't just lift off vertically, as you might expect, but takes off down the runway along with all the other airplanes. Just forward. This morning, Dave is taking the Gazelle to a nearby airfield at Pradanic. The first exercise he has to do there is to get to the runway and perform a fast stop, a kind of helicopter equivalent to a handbrake turn. Don't enter too soon, otherwise we'll stop too quickly. That's, uh, good. That's a good judgment of 50 feet, Roland. Keep uh, it straight. Here, sir. Fast stop, fast stop, go. Dave's progress is rigorously monitored. The pressure is tough and he needs to pack in all the instruction he can get to prepare for his final exams. OK, well done, David. That was a good interwind fast stop. Be careful at the end of the fast stop, when you come to a full stop, that you use the collective lever correctly in order to stop the aircraft from climbing. So otherwise, we don't end up at 50 feet where we started from. Otherwise, well done. But when you first start, of course, everything seems complicated, but uh, certain checks are made, etc., and uh, you carry on through a logical process, and soon after you've done it at least 10, 15 times, the habit starts to kick in and it becomes second nature towards the end. The fast stop complete, Dave now faces a far more difficult test, a practice engine failure. Most people think that if a helicopter's engine stops, the helicopter would plummet to the ground. In fact, there is something a pilot can do. When the engine fails, we are able to glide just as a fixed wing aircraft does, albeit our range is much reduced and we will be landing uh, in what we call auto-rotation. The exercise that we practice with the student allows him to be able to cope if we have an engine failure uh, in that situation. Made, 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 go for five. Engine failure, engine off area. Okay, safety pilot, two levers, two, two switches, leaving the battery master switch on. Stand by for impact, brace, brace. He's done it. He's managed to get the Gazelle back onto the ground safely and with no more of a bump than you'd notice on a normal airliner coming into land. Many of the emergency drills must become second nature if you're ever going to survive anything like an engine failure. And we have to be able to carry them out, not so much to save the aircraft, but more to save ourselves and make sure that we can walk away from it. The checks over with Dave's allowed to do what he really enjoys, stunt flying.
Dave started out his training on airplanes, but there's no doubt his time at Coldrose has given him the helicopter bug. Uh, I'm enjoying the helicopter flying a lot more than fixed wing flying. Uh, uh, fixed wing aircraft, you can't stop, you can't turn around. The helicopter's great, I enjoyed it very much. And Dave's teacher's even more forthright about the joys of flying a chopper. The fixed wing pilot doesn't have to do very much to earn his pay. A helicopter pilot is earning his pay all the time. Particularly because the aircraft requires a greater degree of skill and pilot ability in order to do it properly.